So over the last few years, I really noticed a change that businesses aren't just measuring are they successful in terms of their profit, but they're looking at wider things such as their impact, their environmental impact, how happy and engaged their staff are. And that's really interesting because they're changing the kind of metrics of what success looks like through their ESG programs and through other things. And that just means that the whole idea of what a successful business is, is changing. And that's really exciting. Businesses are really realizing that you can have massive success if you align your business values with impacts other than just profit. People can really see the benefit in doing this. You know, there's, there's a feel good factor, it's the right thing to do, but also there's a real business driver that says that if you get these things aligned and you can have a wider impact that's greater than your profit, you can be a really successful and a fast growing business. So our employment and immigration team have a real passion for something that we call ethical HR. And that basically is all about making sure that you deal with your people issues in a way that is humane and not only complies with you know, the legal obligations, which all businesses have to comply with, but does it in a way that actually looks at that wider impact. What's the impact on your culture and values? What's the ripple effect of anything that you're doing? Is there a way that you can deal with these things that's humane, the least impact negatively on your employees? There's loads of different ways that this could work, but I guess the cornerstone is employee engagement. You wanna make sure that your staff are fully engaged in the organization. They know where you're going. They've got opportunities to be heard and that they're engaged in those change management processes. A couple of other more practical examples I guess could be around hybrid working. So it's around balancing isn't it the competing interests between what staff want and what the business needs and again going on that journey to help people understand uh, that the business needs have to be met as well as individuals needs and working with businesses to get the correct structures in place, the correct processes and the correct employee engagement so that that works successfully. Other practical examples could be around redundancy. You know, it's quite a set process and you've got to go through it to hit the right things by law, but there are ways and means that you can do this to make this much more human. So for example, getting your comms right, getting the early communication in, putting into place support for people who are going through this, and also support for the managers and the persons affected around. And just looking at you know, the whole process from end to end to make sure that it is genuine and is in line with your values, even if it's at a really tough time for the business. Our corporate team has a wide variety of experience from helping companies who are looking to improve their corporate governance arrangements, including readiness for B Corporation certification, but also with companies who are looking to improve their commercial contracts by implementing climate friendly clauses, and also those who are looking to sell or have investment into their business and want to protect their values and ethos. We also help businesses who are looking to transition to employee ownership. And as employee owned business ourselves, we help not just with the technical aspects, but also with ensuring that there's positive people engagement throughout the process and afterwards. We're business owners, so we take a holistic approach and make sure that we're seeking to achieve your objectives. It's really important that we seek to do that by looking at sustainable pathways for growth and ways to maximize impact Businesses are most resilient when they're seizing opportunities and they're managing and identifying their sustainability risks. And it's so important that that's a golden thread throughout the corporate governance of a business. So we help you by looking at that through your policies and procedures, how you work with your supply chain, how you engage with your stakeholders, and importantly, how you reflect that internally throughout your business. So we know that building has huge impact on the environment. It's estimated that 40% of global carbon emissions arise from built environment. And that's a combination of the materials used, demolition, transportation, and then the replacement. There's then the ongoing energy consumption of the actual buildings once they've been constructed, such as heating, cooling, and lighting. This has led to an increase in regulations, which have imposed mandatory obligations on property owners, occupiers and developers with the aim to minimise the environmental impact. The overarching aim is to reduce the impact on the planet. We're able to provide support so you can understand clearly your legal obligations and how that might impact on your business. We also will ensure that any legal documents fit in and work hand in hand with your ESG strategies. We also work with specialist search providers who provide information so we can give specific advice in respect of any climate risks and how that may impact on your property investments. We do a lot of work with uh, developers and contractors 
um, and we're trying to help them to achieve their aims of achieving more sustainable ways of building. We've got clients who are looking to build um, properties to the passive house standard, so commercial buildings and, and residential. Passive house is a way of achieving you know, a very low carbon footprint for a building. But we also try to explain to clients and make them um, understand that the operational carbon, so the carbon that's being used when a building is operation, isn't the only factor con to consider. Um, they also need to look at what we call embodied carbon. So sometimes you know, knocking a building down and rebuilding um, something new isn't always the best option, even if the end result you know, uses less energy, because the amount of energy and resources that are used to actually knock a building down and rebuild can be quite considerable. So it's just that, that piece to make them understand at an early stage you know, what the different options are. Of course, when it comes to then actually doing the work, help them to ensure that their contractual um, you know, obligations are all set out in a way that they can actually you know, achieve their aims. In 2018, we had the introduction of the minimum energy efficiency standards. Those required that a landlord who wanted to grant a lease of commercial property had to ensure that that property had a rating of at least an E or above. Now, April 2023 extended those regulations so that a landlord could not continue to let a property unless it had at least the minimum rating. Now, that's currently an E still, but the intention is that that will be increased in line with net zero goals. Now, this has really led to a greater um, focus on green provisions within leases. And green provisions are essentially just a commitment between the parties to find ways to manage and minimise environmental impacts. Now, our real estate team here have helped clients devise particular provisions which suit their particular circumstances, align with their strategies, and also take practical considerations into account, such as costs and so on. These clauses have covered things like where you have a building that's been specifically designed and developed with high energy performance in mind. It can help to protect that uh, status, include provisions which cover minor improvements to existing buildings, prevent the negative impacts of works on uh, particular premises, and it can also cover a whole host of other things other than energy performance alone. For example, we've advised on terms which require parties to share data and to act together in terms of best practice, waste management provisions and the use of sustainable materials. And we've also advised on dilapidations provisions which have a more circular effect. As the first large law firm to become employee owned and having got our own B Corps certification in 2022, we're really well placed to help businesses in this area and we've built a really dedicated team of people who advise on this and who are passionate about it. It's also reflected through in the way that we support our clients, the client service that we give and the happiness and well-being of our own team. We recognise that this is a journey that most businesses will be on. Nobody's at the end of that journey and it's not a one size fits all. Everybody's going through this transition. But because we've been through that transition and because of the knowledge and expertise that we've built up, we really are in a great place to support existing clients and future clients in driving their purpose and impact.